How are you doing? Hey, hey, how are you doing? Thanks for having us. Hey, no, thank you for uh, for doing this with us. So we have a Q&A, right, of the f -Sharp Foundation and .NET Foundation. That's right. We got a few slides we'll walk through first just to kind of, you know, tell us, tell everybody what Beach Foundation is kind of up to. Um, so we'll kind of roll through a few slides. Oh, I'm sharing my screen, I think. Uh, um, yep. and, then, yeah, and then we'll open it up to questions. And Javier, you're also on the board of directors of Adai. I am. You can ask us questions too. <laughs> Perfect. Sounds good. I'm going to share. I'm going to drop out of here and then I'm going to share your slides, Beth. And we cool. are off. Take it All away. Right. Cool. All right. So here we are. Uh, my name is Beth Massey. As I mentioned, I'm on the board of directors for the .NET Foundation and I'm also the director of marketing for the .NET platform here at Microsoft. Um, Alan? Hey, yeah. Hey. So I'm on the board of the F -Sharp Software Foundation and uh, Look forward to talking about it. So. All right. Okay. So, uh, so first, me and Alan wanted to kind of walk through sort of memory lane on .NET sort of open source journey and sort of like the series of kind of events since 2001 um, of how kind of .NET became open source, starting with actually F Sharp. Okay. So it, it's very apropos that we are at an F Sharp conference and we are talking about .NET open source and F Sharp leading the way. Um, ECMA 335 was the first spec, I guess, released as open source, right, for the common language infrastructure, which was really about like multi languages on the same runtime, which is dot, which is what .NET's all about. And at the same time, Mono project began, right? So Microsoft took and implemented ECMA 335 for Windows specifically. Um, um, Mono project began fully in the open source world as, as an implementation for Linux. Um, but with 2005, the F Sharp language was released, um, invented and, re and released open source uh, with the Apache Tool license. Um, it wasn't until like three years later where the ASP.NET web team at Microsoft started releasing parts of the, of the ASP.NET framework open source, MVC, um, uh, web prop platform became open source. Um, and then in 2012, Alan, there you go, the F Sharp yeah, Software Foundation. Why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, it just was, it was founded in 2012. I don't, I don't have that much more to say. It's just a really exciting event because it started kicking off community building in open source and .NET in particular. So it's really awesome. So the, soft, the F Sharp Software Foundation was founded really for around building that community, right? <laughs> so the in 2014, in April 2014, um, the compiler platform, .NET compiler platform, the Roslyn team had been building this compiler as a service for VB and C Sharp for a few years, actually. It was released in 2014 as open source, and that was the year that the .NET Foundation was also founded. Now, the .NET Foundation was founded um, to, to really uh, not just for the community and the ecosystem, but also to support open source projects built on .NET as well. So we do a lot of project support services as well, in addition to the community and ecosystem building. And then you can kind of see from there, you know, uh, in, in November 2014, uh, the .NET Core project began. Uh, that was literally uh, like a kind of copy paste rewrite of the .NET framework, the uh, like, uh, source open and but not open source framework at the time, and uh, a kind of a, a restart and a reboot of a cross-platform open source .NET. Um, Mono Project actually joined the foundation in 2016. Uh, that's also when Microsoft purchased Xamarin. So the, the kind of the family kind of joined back together. Um, and since then, you kind of will, you kind of have seen .NET evolve to become you know more and more unified. Okay, so in November last year, we released .NET 5, um, and we dropped the core to signify the unification uh, of the platform itself. Okay, and that means. All the great stuff from .NET Framework coming into .NET Core, all the great stuff from Mono and Xamarin coming into .NET Core to create just one .NET. Um, and, you know, in November this year, we'll release .NET 6 and we'll have the completion of that unification with Mono finally. Okay, so it's just a little, little, little history lesson of kind of where we are. So the F Sharp Software Foundation actually existed two years before uh, the .NET Foundation did. Um, so, Alan, why don't you give a little spiel about what the F Sharp Software Foundation is all about? Yeah, so if you go to the next slide, we have our mission statement, which I really want to just kind of take a moment to focus on. Our mission is to grow, support, and educate 
a diverse community around the F# -sharp programming language ecosystem. And the, there's a lot of little components there, right? So we have the F# -sharp programming language ecosystem. So it's not just the language itself, it's the tooling, it's the, you know, projects like Fable or Elmish or, you know, so it's it's a lot of fun. We help maintain some of those projects. Uh, through community building and working with people. And so that's where the grow and support kind of comes in. And education is really important because if you don't have people learning, then you're not building your, your base. Um, and of course, diversity is a, it helps prevent fragility, right? So it's, it's not just a moral goal, it's also a stability goal. If you have a, a very narrow cultural lens, you're going to fail to really, if something came up, it could cause you to not see the whole picture. So diversity is a really critical component. And I, I personally view it as a critical component to long-term success. So if we go to the next slide, it'll kind of have some of our leadership team. We've got Kevin and myself and Pim and Elliot, Philip, Dave, Jeanne and Reed. Um, Reed is the president, I believe is the term for that. Uh, he's, he's a selected he position. Executive director or executive director. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, we were all elected as board members and I believe there's going to be a new election this fall. So cool. That'll be fun. Uh, so, so we have several initiatives and some of them are more, just social, and some of them are more about meeting that um, goal, that, that sort of mission statement. Firstly, I'd like to talk about the Foundation Slack. If you're not a member uh, and you're just starting to get into F Sharp, go to the Slack first. Don't don't go to Stack Overflow. Don't go to go to the Slack because there's people there who are available 24/7. As a result of being in every continent, you know, we have people around the clock. Um, and it's really helpful to get back and forth advice rather than a sort of, here's your answer. Wait, that didn't quite answer my question. So, and we also have a forums on the fsharp.org site that you can go to ask questions uh, and you're going to get community answers. So that we really recommend the Slack um, as a first place to get started. And it's a private Slack, so you do have to go to fsharp.org and sign up as a member. And then we, we let you in. That helps us maintain the community and prevent spam and, and so forth. We have a mentorship program. This is like one of our big ones that I'm really excited about. We connect developers to an existing F Sharp project maintainer and they mentor them in the same way that you would think like an internship. Um, it's really awesome. We've had tremendous results. Uh, people have been very happy with it. And I think it's one of our strongest uh, programs that both meets our diversity goals and are trying to help, you know, because we're a 501c3. One of our targets is to help marginalize, underrepresented, you know, economically disadvantaged groups um, to kind of get in there. And so that's one of the things that really helps that is if you can give people some job experience, that's really helpful. And it helps our community, it helps open source. So I really, I really support that. Actually, um, just uh, just attending this conference today, I just interrupt real quick. It's it's just been amazing to see the the um, how much everybody helps each other. Uh, so I um, really admire that about the F Sharp community um, and the mentoring that you guys all do. Very open community, which is is great. You're open to new questions and learning, and that's awesome. And and you know all the all the best and success. And if anybody out there right wants to help with being a, a mentor or you know a mentee, we might have a lot of people wanting to learn F Sharp after this event. Um, this would be a great program to look into, right? That's right. Yeah. And and if you're interested, you just go in the Slack and you let us know through the FSSF channel. So it's like hashtag FSSF in the Slack. And um, just let us know that you're interested and we'll we'll sort of set you up and try and pair you with a mentee the next time we're doing the mentorship program. Um, so it's, it's really awesome. We love it. Um, as far as the community diversity program, that's where we're kind of helping people um, who normally aren't necessarily uh, might be overlooked or not sort of put up 
to the challenge to attend conferences, training courses, community events. Um, similarly with our down there, the speakers program, but really for this, this specific program, it's about attendance and, and training. And uh, I think it's a good program. And I think uh, it's it's been pretty cool. We've got various user groups. And one of the things I was thinking about talking about here is we do have user groups. I, I have one I run in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, and it's kind of funny because it's virtual now as a result of COVID. We've been getting people from San Francisco and Florida, and it's really funny. Um, but one of the things I was thinking about when I was talking to Beth is, well, really, we should also maybe talk about pairing up with some of the .NET user groups um, that exist. I know in the Triangle, we have Trinug. And it would be awesome. And I know Jamie Dixon was running one at one Trinug uh, previous year. Um, but it'd be really awesome if we put more effort into maybe roping more .NET developers to cross-pollinate and, and have that understanding of F-sharp and having more of a back and forth and a relationship and a conversation. So that's sort of what I was hoping with talking with Beth that made me think, well, you know, I, I think I like that we have our F-sharp focus groups because we can focus on things that matter to us. But I also thought oh, it would be cool if we collaborated more, we partnered more, or maybe even spoke at .NET user groups more. So. Yeah, I mean, we have a whole Meetup Pro group, uh, the .NET group, over 300 groups worldwide. Um, so, you know, if you, uh, and we have groups that are specific, like Xamarin, for instance, so uh, specific frameworks and, you know, applications and app models under .NET. So um, different language groups are absolutely welcome as, as well, for sure. Uh, we just look for active community um, that you know we are willing to help you know build that network for sure. Yeah. And uh, one of the ones is the speaker program. So one of the speaker program is to help support speakers for events and meetup groups. And that's where we sort of pay to help people get to those groups. Uh, and I know with everything virtual, that's been less of a hurdle. Um, so we've been a little less active on that front. But once things start to calm down, the hope would be to sort of ramp that up again and, and start getting more people out there and, and talking. And um, it, we've had, I know in, in my own meetup group, it's been really awesome to have members of the community come by and, and give a talk. So um, I think it'd be good and it might help sort of inject some enthusiasm. Absolutely. And then finally, for sort of our initiatives, um, our major initiatives anyway, we have events. And one of those was the Applied F-Sharp Challenge, uh, which was a couple years back. And that was where we set up a list of sort of targets and tried to get practical applied you know, F-Sharp, you know, because a lot of people like to write F-Sharp to do little scripts or fun things, or but they don't get to do it at work, right? Their workplace isn't currently using F-Sharp. Um, so they use it for, I know in my own work, I use it for small scripts that are, are transient, but not necessarily checked in, right? Um, but it's really nice to see practical, pragmatic applications of F-Sharp to solve real world problems. Um, that was an awesome challenge. We wanted to run it this year, and we had some challenges getting judges as a result of just sort of everyone's time being spread thin. But I'm, I'm hoping in the future we'll be able to start that up again. And uh, we saw some awesome submissions for the Applied F-Sharp Challenge. Cool. I think, go ahead, Beth. I just think, I think it was cool. Like we, yeah, we, we've, uh, the Dada Foundation also has looked into like, you know, Summer of Code and uh, Hacktoberfest and that sort of thing as well. So I know our outreach, outreach committee um, has, has worked through a lot of little things and logistics. It's just been tough with the pandemic. So we kind of understand like, you know, these events are just hard to execute. Um, this one completely, you know, is, is sponsored by the F-Sharp Software Foundation. So thank you. Uh, and the .NET Foundation. Um, these virtual events is sort of where we've had to go. Uh, but I think they're pretty effective, too. So um, Yeah. And I guess that puts to mind something that I, I forgot to add to this slide. Yeah, we do sponsor um, events like this. Like, uh, I know before I was a board member, they sponsored my Southern Fried F-Sharp, which was hosted at Red Hat, and Red Hat graciously offered the space. Um, I know like we've, we've sponsored various conferences and, and so forth 
especially ones that don't charge ticket price. Right. Um, and then we've, we've also done the outreachy program, which is where we try and help people contribute and, and write some write some code, some F-sharp code. And then finally, this week, we're running the F-sharp game jam. Uh, it's not too late to write some F-sharp this weekend. Um, I can always extend the deadline if I get a whole bunch of people saying, please give me three more days. Cool, uh, that's it. Whoever's watching right now wants to get into F-sharp, this, this might be your chance right now. Yeah. Alan will extend the deadline. And you know, there's a lot of ways to do it. You can use Fable and Web Canvas, right? You can use Mono Game. You know, things that people traditionally think of as C sharp, they work great with F sharp. Um, I know because I've done it myself. I think uh, if you're looking for like more experimental approaches, Aardvark is really exciting and interesting. So there's a lot of different approaches that have been sort of tread for indie game development. So if you're excited about that, um, come see it. It's on itch. I can link to it. Um, so cool. And uh, it's just called F Sharp Jam. Yeah. So how to get involved? So say you're you're reading this, you're like, oh, I'd love to really contribute to the F Sharp Software Foundation. Uh, first step: join the Slack because that's where a lot of our communication happens, and that's where a lot of our community building happens. And it's also where we get most of our feedback, right? So the F Sharp Software Foundation Slack, the FSSF, little tongue twister. Um, we love to hear from you and. You might decide after being there for a year, you want to be on the board. That could be a great way to contribute. We look, we're always looking for people. Now there is a sort of uh, expectation of at least like you know 10 or 15 hours a month of uh, contribution, and we meet twice a month. But if that's exciting to you, then we might be interested in having you join. Um, you can join one of our programs. Uh, just hit us up in the Slack, which you have already joined, and uh, let us know in the FSSF channel uh, that you're interested in contributing or guiding or even leading one of our programs. It doesn't have to be led by a board member. That's just been done because, you know, uh, board members tend to be excited and, and want to put their elbow grease in. Um, but yeah, anyone can work on board as well. So very boots on the ground kind of boards. Sounds like both of these foundations. It's great. Yeah, but but we would love, I mean, I know I would love to have more, you know, if you're a member and you just want to contribute and you don't want to vote or make decisions, um, we're more than happy to have you help. We, we always want volunteers, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> um, and the easiest one is being a mentor or a mentee, right? Um, I don't mean easiest in terms of um, effort, but in terms of how much planning you need to do, you know, you just, Get them on board, come up with a uh, sort of, this is how we get started. It's going to help you write your docs, right? So if you're a maintainer of an open source library and you're like, it seems like people aren't getting it um, and they're not telling me that they're not getting it. Mentoring is an excellent way to improve your documentation. You know, your people are going to tell you, hey, I'm struggling with this and I don't know how to move forward. A lot of times if you don't mentor someone, they hit that snag and they walk away. They don't tell you. They just keep it to themselves because they feel embarrassed that they don't understand it. But if you're mentoring them, there's a bit of an obligation that, hey, I don't understand this, right? They right. are somewhat expected to speak up. And so it actually provides a lot of value, not just the labor that that mentee is going to do, but also helping sort of slipstream your onboarding process and slipstream your process for contributions. So it's really, I think it has a reciprocal help. It's not just the mentee, it's the mentor that also really benefits. Cool. So I just wanted to talk just a little bit about some of the .NET Foundation initiatives. If we're just going to roll through really fast. I know it was really important to get, you know, to the F Sharp Software Foundation since this is an F Sharp event. Um, but there is a relationship here. Um, so, you know, maybe people aren't really super familiar with um, either foundation. But, you know, the .NET Foundation is a little bit different. Um, we do a lot of the same types of stuff as, as Alan was talking about, like building the ecosystem. We have a speaker, you know, a speaker uh you can sign up like a, a speaker bureau. Uh, basically, you can sign up. Speakers can put their names in. They can sign up for for um, for events. We have the meetup groups. So we are doing a lot of the community outreach and diversity and that sort of thing through our outreach committee. But um, it really is like 
the Donna Foundation is a little bit more. Uh, it also is like a center of gravity for really like open development and collaboration around .NET. So its mission, its mission is really to support an innovative and commercially friendly open source ecosystem around the development platform. So we have over a hundred projects um, and repos under its stewardship. Um, and so the you know open source software foundations typically provide you know protection, legal services, support services, and best practices for helping these projects be successful um, and to grow the so grow the software and these open source ecosystems too. Um, so you know, and that takes you know a lot of funding. Um, so we have you know a ton of corporate sponsors that donate to the .NET Foundation to keep it going. Um, it's not just the individuals, it's large companies that are invested in the future of .NET at all up. Um, so .NET is bigger than just Microsoft. Microsoft's one of the corporate sponsors, but we have um, we have Engine, Dev Express, AWS, Octopus Deploy, Okta, Progress, Uno, um, Uno Platform, VMware, and Bullsoft now, um, all as corporate sponsors donating uh, money to help us you know, support all of these projects um, and, and grow our ecosystem. So thank you so much for all of those sponsors. Um, our leadership team um, is is uh, elected. So this is a board of passionate .NET community members. Um, Javier, you saw him on the broadcast earlier, is also on the board with me. Um, this is the elected board. Uh, these were elected in uh, July 2020, except for me. I am actually appointed by Microsoft. Microsoft created and stood up the .NET Foundation and in the bylaws one um, has one appointed board member. Uh, Bill Wagner is also from Microsoft, was elected. Um, and Claire Novotny is now our uh, executive director who um, came from the community in sight and uh, now also works for Microsoft as well. So um, this is our leadership team and we are very much boots on the ground and also run uh, each, each of us chair one of these committees. Um, so our projects committee, the, our project committee is not chaired by a board member directly. That's Sean Walker, who everybody's probably known from the open source ecosystem. Um, he's now a uh, lead maintainer of a project called Octane. Um, so he is our, our chair. They're really in charge of bringing new projects, bringing those projects to the board for consideration for coming into the .NET Foundation. Um, outreach, they do, they like I mentioned, support community activities and diversity programs. Um, so Alan, I think they'd probably be a lot of connection between our two foundations there that we should probably look into a little bit more. Um, and by the way, we just to just say that we have been collaborating a little bit more lately, especially as we tried to pull this event together, so that I think there's a lot of connection points both the foundations can make. Um, we have our sponsorship committee, which really just brings in the funding, organizes a technical steering committee, um, and and really like like provides benefits to um, to our sponsors, um, members, member support benefits. They're also in charge of creating the nominating committee, which brings in the nominations of the new board as well, and then they provide all the benefits and managing of our membership. Um, marketing, I'm the chair of the marketing um, committee. So that's all PR, go to market for the projects, events, web presence, social communications, so all the fun fun stuff and maybe the, the boring stuff behind the scenes of marketing. Um, education is one of our new committees and that's really where Alan, we connected you and Kevin to Brian, um, who Brian is uh, also not on the board, but a passionate volunteer who's created a set of curriculum for, uh, for .NET and we've created a, a .NET Foundation Academy and he's, he's ready to launch it. Um, and really need some volunteers. I think this is where we could, um, the F Sharp community could contribute some F Sharp curriculum here as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So uh, I think there's a lot of, a um, lot of opportunities there. Just really quick, we here's some of the project services that I kind of mentioned. Don't need to get into it a lot, but you know, really, it's about you know providing all these services for projects so that they can just focus on writing code. Um, so some projects take advantage of a lot of services and some don't need all of these support, but they're available. Um, and we did meet, mention the meetups. Um, so happy to happy to have F Sharp groups who are active um, apply to be a, a member of our Meetup Pro. That means we pay for all your meetup fees. So um, and and connect you to this network of, of speakers. Um, elections are here. Wanted to just make this. PSA, they are any member can run for the board. If you're not a member, you go to the .netfoundation.org and get to be a member. You can apply to be a member. Um, they are here. They take place uh, August 4th through 18th. Um, and then you can check out exactly who's running. I'm very excited to see some of the nominations and, and read through um, everybody's, uh, everybody's pitch. So.
Uh, also, I mentioned the academy. Um, so Brian is, you know, creating this, uh, you know, higher education to, they aimed at higher education computer science software students. Um, so like college level, um, and uh, they're looking for partnership opportunities with F Sharp. So if anybody is interested out there, um, take a look at the working group out on our uh, .NET Foundation GitHub org there. Um, Brian would love to have you out there. Um, Finally, just to how to get involved with us, there's a lot of things you can do. Even if you don't want to necessarily like become a member, you can still sign up for the newsletter. Um, you can contribute to a project. Uh, you can, you know, nominate your meetup, find a meetup. There's a lot of things you can do. Um, anyways, I don't want to take up all of the time here, but um, I just want to leave, you know, leave it for some Q&A. I think Jeff said that there was some comments out there, so I want to leave, leave a little time for a Q&A. Yes, they are. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to bring him up here if you give me one second. So the best one, uh, there was this gentleman. Uh, his name is Don. Do you guys know him? Uh, <laughs> he said, Alan Ball's doing a great job for the F-Sharp um, org at .NET Com. Really good voice for the foundation. So nice tip of the hat there, right? So that's, <laughs> that's awesome. So thank you, Don, for doing that. Obviously, we all know who Don. Well, thanks for inventing F-Sharp. There you go. Well, perfect. It's <laughs> like, great. and back to you, sir. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, so we have a couple um, call-outs here to um, Paige and uh, Maria uh, when they were doing the uh, killer presentation of .NET Notebooks. A lot of cool stuff happening there. So they're looking forward to seeing that. Uh, I There were several about here. Uh, here's the best one. It's like I'm 26 hours awake. A lot of great presentations. Thank you, F Sharp Org. Good night. It is 4 a.m. That is some hardcore .NET and uh, F Sharp yeah. viewing. That's amazing. It's hard to pick the right time to start a virtual event. It really is. <laughs> always, always. So I love that. So uh, we have our dear friend Jeremy Sinclair. Oh, Alan just brought up uh, linking up with some of the .NET user groups. Trust that I will be. I will be all for seeing more .NET user group sessions. I can tell you the .NET Foundation virtual user group team would love to produce and host meetups to bring more visibility. So it goes back to that mem to that um, work between uh, the two foundations, right? Yeah. Which is, and, which and we want more. Amazing, Jeremy's awesome. You know, he's he's he spoke at the last on a conf. I love Jeremy. He's I think he was live tweeting the whole event today. So thank he, you, Jeremy. Appreciate it. He is a machine. That's what he is. <laughs> And in the background, I was going to see, I see our dear friend, Mr. Jeff Fritz. What are you doing back there, Jeff? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He looks like a robot because, like, <laughs> refreshing of everything. Yeah, um, I think we're almost ready to announce some winners of the swag. Oh, I don't want to do that. I want to do it like this. Yeah. So, I mean, I was going to say, obviously, it was you guys were going through the presentation and everything. It was great. That's were the there biggest... any other questions for the No, that, that was it. It was a lot more comments than actual questions, right? Because people want oh. to learn more about it. And the biggest thing is that um, I think Alan mentioned is it, like it's a it's a lot of hard work. There's not a there's not a lot of glamour to it. It's the background things that need to happen. Like yeah. the .NET Foundation doesn't say you got to do this with .NET. The FSHR Foundation doesn't say you got to do this. We got to keep the community alive, and that's what the foundations are there for. So, yeah. Mr. Fritz, you joined. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. It it has been a fantastic day. Oh my goodness. It, you guys are like my two partners in crime here to execute this event. <laughs> I mean, thank you to all the speakers, the content, the all that is amazing. But like, you know, there's a lot of things like just logistics, and you guys are like rock stars on that. So thank you so much. And to all the hosts to Myra and Jamie, like oh, yeah. like great job today yeah. as well. Well, also to the great speakers, because obviously, you know, Ooh. that is that is just that's we the background job. The speakers, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to say, I had a lot of fun doing uh, the session with Alfonso, and actually, even Don liked it as well. I think it was a tweet about it, and which hilarious. was great. Yeah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> I think if we say his name one more time, he will show up. <laughs> hey, Don. <laughs> Hey, hey, Don! Thank hey, you so much for being the sponsor. Big, big, big deal to have you like just drive all of this. It was, it's just, it's so fantastic getting okay. to know you as well. My job is to say a huge thank you to Yavia, um, uh, Beth, and Jeff for everything you've done in putting this together. I think it's been a breakthrough moment 
for .NET to sort of integrate F Sharp and the .NET Foundation communities yeah. and in such a positive event. And um, yeah, it's just been really a wonderful time. It's been wonderful working with you all in preparing this and, you know, a big thank you to all three of you for everything you've done. And that's, for, that's not just for myself, but on behalf of the entire F Sharp community and thank the you, .NET Dan. community in general. I, I have a question for you, Don. So when you started in the keynote, there was light coming out of that window. Now there is no light. <laughs> what time is it at home? <laughs> it's 1 a.m. here. Ooh, wow. uh, not mm. as, I think, uh, the, I, I don't have his name, but who just joined, I think is joined from Persia, uh, from Iran, if I if I correctly. And it's always been great. It is how worldwide the F Sharp and uh, .NET communities are. That's great. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's been a pleasure I this still... whole week, the, the past two weeks that we've been working it, it, with the last the last minute tech checks and getting speakers all settled. It, the, the recording that we did last week, um, it, the, the run up to this event is always such a rush. And and, you know, huge thanks to everybody for their help. We yeah. also want to thank our sponsors as well that make right. this oh my gosh, yes. happen. Right. Um, so, you know. I've got a slide of their logos and these guys have been super generous um, to donate all the swag giveaways that we've got uh, giving away in a moment. Um, uh, there you go, uh, including the F-Sharp Software Foundation. So thank you, Ellen, for, for the swag. Um, these guys really, PyTop, I actually wanna call out because they are giving away a donation to a school of your choice to give them software for building uh, building on top of the PyTop. So there's a whole bunch of lessons uh, to learn C Sharp and F Sharp and Python. And like, th this is like kind of cool. It's more of a donation uh, kind of, I just wanted to call them out. They're very, very generous. Everybody else has like some super fun stuff though. So um, it, like over $2,000 for each bag, swag bag, it'll be winning. Wow, wow, wow. Oh so, my gosh. That's yeah. yeah that, that's really incredible. Yeah. So, uh, um, w w you know, the swag we're used to from F-Shop events is like stickers. So this is, this is, <laughs> well, you don't this is <laughs> if you don't win, we still have some great digital swag. So you can mod the .NET bot like Jeff announced at the beginning of the day. Go ahead and oh, check yeah. that out. You can create your own coding companion and, and they'll basically, uh, you know, make him like look exactly how you would like. Um, there's also like .NET Foundation store. You could show your support. It is a do like a donation to us, you know, if you buy some stuff on this store. We have belts, t-shirts, glasses, all kinds of fun stuff out there. And yes, Don, we do have stickers, sticker packs as well. And we have F-sharp t-shirts. We do. I didn't put a picture there. We have F-sharp t-shirts. If, if, if I am right, you're correct, there's actually an F-sharp uh, foundation. On the F-sharp.org, you can find an F-sharp um, foundation store with some things. You can I think that store. that's exactly what the giveaway is, is something from that mm -hmm. store, from F-sharp mm -hmm. software mm -hmm. foundation. So, okay. yeah. yeah. Um, all right. So drum roll so javier has randomly selected out of all the folks that signed up over the course of the day today 20 winners and we'll be showing your names here you will be contacted directly by each of the sponsors via the email address that you left and here they are so congratulations all of you folks if you're still watching um if you're not that's okay you don't have to be present here to win <laughs> <laughs> but that, thank that, you. Is, that, is, that is really great you know and one thing i'm really uh makes me happy i actually don't know any of these names so we've got uh, you know the got new people coming into the community it's not oh, rigged it is, <laughs> yeah it's not rigged <laughs> uh, so welcome everyone who's the swag bag giveaway winners and welcome to the uh to the f shop community if you've not been participating before and great to great to have you along all right so thank you okay. everybody thank you all again and our next big event f shop exchange coming up so in uh and uh, the f shop game jam running right now yeah. get involved yes. right now <laughs> yes i'll put the link on twitter yeah and that. and i'm i'm gonna probably extend the deadline and we'll be doing more of these the, the nice thing about the game jam so we used itch.io as our little host and the nice oh. thing about that host is the contestants themselves vote. And so it reduces the administrative overhead so we can do more of them. You know, it's it's really great. quite easy. So it's great. It'll be a lot of fun. Let's amplify the matter. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Goodbye.
Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>